Okay, so um, to open up, we're going to do not all mo cool. Um, just to, I guess, center ourselves and get us ready for what we're going to learn today. And um, in the middle, we say um, hello, kumana, because that's what we do at school every day. So, yeah. And I'm just going to start us off. ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、
It's a movement for the world. It's a movement um, basically rising up the indigenous knowledge, which has also been suppressed, bastardized, commercialized, destroyed, reconstructed, diminished, beyond recognition. But the indigenous people are pulling it back in and saying, hey, this knowledge is knowledge that we need in the world today to push back on the colonial constructs of corporate America and corporate everything. It's, only not, it's not only America, right? But America is one of the biggest baddies, right? So um, I think Kapu Aloha, its origin, and Luana speaks to it in Kapu Aloha 101, we've had it from time immemorial because it was codified in the land. And our kupuna, all they would do is align with it and then make the aina, aina momona. Because what we're facing in the world today is that our aina is dying. As it dies, we die because the aina and us are one. So as it's dying, we're dying and we know it. So what we're doing is saying, hey, guess what? I don't have to participate in my own destruction. And I refuse to. But I know an answer. Kapu Aloha is that answer. And we're bringing it back in to reactivate it. Because it's time. It's not that it is like the whole universe aligned for this to happen in this way. And our kupuna prophesized it. Our kupuna prophesized it. Even in the Eiho Ana Oluna, Epi Anola, Ehui Ana Namoko Eku Ana Kapaya. It was foretold that these things were coming. And I, I have a Mo'olelo, it's not, I, I can only speak to part of it because really it belongs to the Ohanas who carry it, the Roy family, uh, Mikahala Roy and her father, Uncle Mauna, mm -hmm. about Pu'u, um, uh, what is it called? Um, Ahiena. Right? When Kamehameha was on his deathbed, he actually took Kukai Nimoku, who is a, a Kua Malahini actually, right? Who came. And he was the war god, the maggot mouth Akua, right? But he put him to sleep on his deathbed. And then he said, There shall be no more war in Hawaii. No. And when, when I heard that from Uncle Mauna, that was profound to me because I was like, whoa, that's the origin of some of the peace that is supposed to reign. You know, because Mauna Kea is the temple of that peace and how it connects to our whole Pai Aina is through the ceremonies done up there, including the solstice and equinox that we had to actually redo and refine the location because it had been leveled by the telescopes. Right? But to re-invoke that, that connects us all, all the way to Motumanamana, the solstice and equinox ceremonies. Myself, Uncle Kahu Terangi, um, my auntie, Kamaka Hukilani, we had to redo those alignments, find those star alignments to get us back on track so that we could participate in the, in the natural time, the universal time, not the time of empire. The time we live in on the watch, that's the time of empire. You know, in the calendar, that's a Julian date calendar. That's a calendar of the Roman Empire in the time of empire. So that kind of time makes you sick, <laughs> you know, within reason. I had a stroke, I had two strokes actually, and they happened in my time center so I have no sense of time or days. <laughs> um, and that's freeing for me. Of course, it frustrates everybody else because I'm late or I don't know what day it is and all of that. <laughs> but, um, but in a sense, I'm free and I'm keeping track of the time of the universe where we track the motion of the, of the universe that's 26,000 years old. 
and we just came through the completion of that. But we could see it because we had built those, rebuilt the alignments on the Mauna. And then we had to connect them. And when we connect them, we go, oh my gosh, they connect to all of these hails all across the archipelago. And then we said, oh my gosh, let's take it out further. It connects all the way out to the Pacific, the Moana Nui. And that's why Mauna Kea is significant to all of the Pacific is because they also connect back to us. So while we can look out there and say, that's Motumana Mana, that's the northern turnaround of the sun, but then we have to go Motumana Mana and look back. And what we see is it goes right back to the Mauna. So our time, though, had been destroyed. Our, our th In Hawaiian, it's beautiful because the word au is time and space. And so that's what we needed to reclaim, the time and space, and replace ourselves in that context and align with the aina so that we can restore aina momona, the abundance of the earth. You know, the, the word kahelahela, for example, one of its definitions is the summation of the life forces of the sea and the land. And that's one word, <laughs> summarizing that. So when the Akuas roam the land, right, they're invoking the summation of the life force of the sea and the land. And what it is is that our, we invoke Kapu Aloha so that we can be in alignment with the Akua and the akua then with the land. And when those things occur, then the ma Mauna miracles happen, is that we must be in alignment with the akua. And when those things happen, then the aina flourishes, and everything is restored to the sacredness the day it was created. You hear everybody talk about Mauna Kea as an origin place. What do they mean by that? It's the z it represents the zenith of our ancestral ties to creation itself. Because what we're saying is that is where time and space began because it is reaching into the pole. It is the vawakua into the realm of the akua, the na'akua and the ancestors. Keakua, creator too. Right? That got somehow uh, cleansed through the missionary um, undoing of, of our stuff. But there is no, there is no um, separation, you know, and that's what Kapu Aloha also brings to us. Because when we separate ourselves from the land, that was the first thing. When we separated ourselves from the Akua, when they tried to sever that, that was the first colonial action, was to take us from our Akua. But our kupuna were wise. They said, oh, oh, yeah, the Baibala, that's a good word. I'll only pick out, no problem. Except for, you only have one akua? We have many. But he's just like all the other ones, right? So there's no conflict. Because the universal force is aloha. That is love, unconditional. That is agape love. That is the love that all of the religions actually speak to. So we have no separation. But part of that is that we, the Mauna is helping us heal, helping us to recognize our connection and then to return back to it. And from that, we're activating, we're unleashing the peace across the planet, you know? Because all, if you look at all of the major movements that we are a part of too. We're all coming together in those through that aloha. And so let me just define a few things. For kapu aloha to exist, there must be truth. It's a truth that's meant to heal. It's not a truth that is meant to judge. There's no, no need to judge because the akua judge. You're either in alignment or you're not in alignment. 
and all you need to be saying is, I just want to be in alignment, okay, just let me be in alignment. <laughs> you know what I mean? When we get challenged. And it was so what if we're challenged? Because then it's just an opportunity for us to address it, speak truth to it. But more importantly, I think what the biggest power of the Kapu Aloha is, is that it creates the space for compassion to be restored to the world. Because because of empire, because of colonialism, because of imperialism, because of all of the isms, isms, schisms, we have been separated, disjointed, has our, our mind has been colonized. So this is our opportunity as a people to heal and not be afraid, even if there's pilakia. Okay, so we all get one problem, we all, we all go. What do we do? We embrace it. We aloha that person. We cry with them. We feel their pain. We feel their pain. And then we heal with them as they are allowed to rise up out of it. Um, we cry for it. We've seen when our kupuna were being arrested, Hardest point for me. Hardest point for me. Because when you see them on the ground, when you see them like this, hardest point. But you know what? I wasn't sure I could be there to watch that. But then I wanted to face it because I didn't want to have that. But you know what? You know, I uwe and someone immediately came and held me and cried with me and awayed with me. And then I was healed. And we mustn't be afraid to have that, those tears, because those are what cleanse our spirit and make us stronger so that we can then be there for the next person who needs it. Because you know right after all of that happened, another brother, brother was having the same problem. And there were like 10 of us went and embraced him and his son. And we went through the whole process with him. Same thing. Uwe, uwe. Come back out of it and come back to normal, normalcy. Where we don't feel the pain, but we feel the joy. And so that's hard to describe. But another way to look at it is this. When we're talking about how do we use it in a movement, we need to say, make no mistake, when, when Gandhi and Martin Luther King, who are, I see as the fathers of nonviolence, when they came forward, they gave us a gift on how to I mean, Gandhi was in the 1800s, right? That's when the Industrial Revolution was happening that was coming upon us and going to really challenge our existence. Like today, we're still suffering from the effects of the Industrial Revolution. But he gave us a gift on how to push back in that colonial thing. And that was that we had to have the discipline we needed that compassion because when they come at you with the batons, the tear gas, and all of those things, how, do we, how are we going to deal with it, right? That's where the discipline comes in. You know, the discipline of watching our kupunas getting roughed up a little or just even arrested, the indignity of it. But then we have to ask ourselves, hey, what happens if I have to watch my, my tutu, my auntie, my uncle, getting hit with the baton? How am I going to deal with that? How am I going to deal with that? It's a natural human response to want to defend. So what do you do? You have to go into, into aloha. You have to step into it and fall back into the akua's arms to be able to have an ulterior force, a different force, a spiritual force, 
a force of mana that when you go there and you say, please don't hit my tutu to the police officer, you go down, you say, hit me first. I have to protect my tutu. That's the spirit that you have to embody. But you know, in that sacrifice, that's a sacrifice that we're making so that actually not only we, but they can be free. The police have actually demonstrated their aloha too. We see their tears rolling down their face when they're standing over there. Because the, the young Kiai, I saw him happen, I saw it happen. I realized that the, those police, the batons and the tear gas, the riot police, yeah? You notice that the riot police had every weapon except for the shield. And you know why? Because they knew that we didn't have any weapons, so they don't need a shield. So there was a consciousness that only they had weapons, right? So I said, wow, and I'm watching this. And at the, at the time, I was on the phone <laughs> trying to get a hold of the ACLU so that I could record. Uh oh, wait, sorry. Sorry, I forgot to turn my phone off. <laughs> um, excuse me, I know this is dis disturbing. OK, sorry, OK. Um, we saw that they were uncomfortable. The riot police were uncomfortable. They kept looking like this. Because the kiai, they don't know anything. They're just crossing the street. So they're crossing through them while they're supposed to be, you know, staked out over there. I was like, oh, okay, I see something's wrong here. So I go up to the officer and I say, officer, excuse me. Do you not want anyone walking behind you? He's like, yeah, man, we can't have anybody walking behind us. I said, okay, okay. Okay, wait, 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 here, here. So I call these young, young, they're like, give folks age, young, kiai. They're like, yeah, auntie. I said, hey, can you go over there and you stay over here and you make sure that nobody walks behind them? It was that simple. And they said, oh yeah, shoot, Dan. boom, boom. So then the police have come and said to us, we are so, thank you, we are so amazed at, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> at how organized you folks are, you know? And, um, and so um, they are impressed by the kiai. And that's huge. And even their captain has come. And I know he's actually looking for me right now. <laughs> um, so maybe he's watching. Um, anyways, I'll call you back. But the thing is, is he was their captain. He trained all of those guys. And he has said, that he will come and be arrested with us because he sees that what we're standing for is Pono. And he says he wants to participate in helping to raise the standard of aloha in the world. And where does that happen? Where has that happened? It's happened here. And all of the goodwill across the whole planet is now being able to be acknowledged in the same way. Because it's not only here. Aloha isn't a color. It isn't about being kanaka. It's about moving aloha, which is love and compassion, on earth. And it is true that we have some tools that I think come from our kupuna that help us to invoke aloha. And it is, I think, a gift. Every people on earth have a gift, and this is a little bit of ours. And we need to, we need to embrace that and to now take it around the world and <coughs> go and teach the police to have kapu aloha training <laughs> because they don't have it. They don't have tools in their toolbox to bring, to really invoke peace and to move aloha. And they need it. They, they, I think they want it. They want to keep, the, you know, they want to keep people safe, but they just don't know how. 
So we can give them training. We told them, hey, you guys need Kapu Aloha training. <laughs> give us a call, we'll come. We will come and do that training. But even, even the politicians, right? They need Kapu Aloha training. You know, because the whole system, the patriarchal system, and by the way, just to qualify that, when I say patriarchal, I don't mean that matriarchal is not the opposite of patriarchal. It's the balance. And that's what's kind of taken us out of balance, is we've been operating under empire and a patri patriarchal system. And the women, it's their responsibility also to rise up. And no can blame the men. So women, too, just got to rise up, not be afraid, because it's not a threat. It's just balance. So that is part of what the whole movement is about, is rebalancing. The zero sums game, you know, like, they're, like in court, if there's a winner, there has to be a loser. That's just not going to work anymore. We need to find, you know, it's like that survival show. <laughs> we always was watching from Big Island, at least, and we was like, the guy no can fish. How can he? <laughs> what? The guy no can catch nothing. Because <laughs> it seems weird to us, right? We're like, I don't know why. Are they just making that up? Because he got to know he can just use bamboo and make the thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, what? If we played it, it would mean the object of the game wouldn't be the last man standing. The object would be that everyone has to eat. And that's, that's the true nature of how it is when you live on an island. And we are an island society. And so we have to live in that way. But also for us, we have to not, we have to let go of some of that colonial stuff that says don't make waves and speak truth. And you know, the people from Berkeley, bless their heart, love them. They came and they said, we get it, Keloha. You're speaking truth to power. And I was like, no. And they're like, of course you are. We're from Berkeley. We coined the phrase, <laughs> speaking truth to power. <laughs> and I said, no, no, I, I understand. I get it. But you know what? You, that presumes that those guys sitting in that BLNR board are the power, but they're not. So that, that's where we free our own mind, is when we, we know where the real power is. The power is in the mauna, in the ocean, in the wind, in tutupele is the power. Not those bagas over there <laughs> <laughs> sitting on the board making all the rules, you know? No. But for us to huli that, we have to be able to engage in it. But to, to engage in it in a, in a higher truth, in a higher way. Not to just go and try to play their game. Because their game has got us into this place where we have a critical thing happening to our earth, to Papa. You know, we need the shirt, who's your Papa? <laughs> For real, it's Papa Hanamoku. And I want to conspire with her. And so Kapu Aloha allows me to align with Papa. And when I align with Papa, then I align with all the Akua. And then they guide my actions. Not my ego, not my mind. Papa, Earth Mother, Wakea, Sky Father. Our time then connects to the pole. We have the pole, vertical pole, and then we have the horizontal pole. There's the, the entranceway to the pole of Papahana Mokuakea is out there. That's where we go into the creation time. Same thing on Mauna Kea. Mauna Kea is the entranceway to that pole, the vertical pole. The other pole is the deepest ocean. What makes Mauna Kea learn this word and act, uh, I don't know how to say it, an access point on the earth is because it connects to the deepest ocean, to the highest pole in the sky, the darkest part of the star realm. And it's connected through water, through the lake. 
The lake is the entranceway into the pole. It's like a lena, a place. Yeah. Why the picos of our babies go there or our ancestors enter there. But it connects like this. And what does that mean? It means just as a kumulipo reports that it's the unfolding of all of creation. And see, I want to say this, that we think our kumulipo is pow. Uh-uh. Creation still continues. We've allowed our mind to believe that no one's reciting the kumulipo anymore, and therefore it's pow. Creation continues. And we need to participate in invoking that creation and calling upon the Akua to help us to be able to call it forth too. Otherwise, we will all become extinct. We have to change that paradigm that the Kumulupo is not done. It's supposed to be continuing. And so, and I know that that's kind of a controversial thing. People are like, what? What you mean, Kyoloha? I mean that someone needs to keep composing. Someone needs to keep reporting it. There's still species that we, on the Mauna, there's a little lichen species. We had an expert get on the stand and say, this is a new species to science. We said, oh, okay. It's new, you don't even know. It doesn't have a name yet? No. So that means you're gonna destroy that? And how long about would it take for it to recover? if ever, about 50 years. So we're gonna destroy something that we don't even know what it is, and you think it'll take 50 years. What if, what if that's all that it is? You know what I mean? Like we cannot keep making these rational decisions, I mean irrational decisions based on irrational logic and still let it go. And you know, let me just say, the Supreme Court of Hawaii made a decision that goes something like this. The mountain was raped once, 13 times, maybe 22, because there's really 22 telescopes. But it's okay to keep raping her because the, the first rape was already done. You know, that's the rape logic. And everyone on the planet should reject that logic. It cannot go on. The only other option is for us to go to the legislature and say, you need to overturn that bad law. The degradation principle being executed by the Supreme Court of Hawaii. You know, that's the truth. We need to rise up and actually not only engage on every level, because Kapu Aloha can be engaged on every level. You know, people think, well, do I have to be an activist? No. but you're an activist because you were born Hawaiian, <laughs> right? But at, on every level, wherever you are. See, so we need to share with everyone. It's, it's nice that everyone goes up to the Mauna and they get to have Kapu Aloha right there. It's all around you. You're in the Papalani's, the realm of the, of the rainbow goddesses. So you see all the rainbows, you feel the wind, the mist, the sun, the beauty. But we have to bring now the Kapu Aloha down and out. Because we can invoke it at any time. And it's just in the prayer, just the little prayer that we do quietly where no one else has to hear. You know, it's not, you don't have to just do the big oli. Big olis are great. But you don't need to, if you don't oli, you don't have to. It's right here in your heart. You're just asking the Akua to bide with you. Because when the Akuas are present, the Kahela Hela happens. When they walk the earth with us because we ask them to, all of the Aina, the Kupuna have a word. They go, we're traversing the land. And what those Kupuna mean when they're saying that is that they are invoking the Akua and they're running the Aina. And every time they run it, they invoke the akua. And so then it becomes fruitful again. They go and they lay their whole kupu on the ahu or the lele. And right there, they're asking the akua to be present right there 
and to make it Aina Mamona abundant. Restore it to the day it was when it was created. So those kupuna, when they make that, they, for a long time I was like, what do they mean when they're traversing the Aina? They're just holo holo. Or they call you up, Keloha, come pick me up. I like go holo holo. Right, so I would only have to say, is it going to be like one day or like three days, Auntie? <laughs> because I got to get someone to feed the animals, you know what I mean? She's like, I don't know, maybe tree, maybe tree. And I would, I would just go and not even know where I'm going. And they were like, let's go over here, let's go over there, let's go over here. Everywhere we're going, they're collecting water, they're delivering water, they're offering water, they're making, picking flour, making offering, all over. And you know what they're doing? They're actually invoking the Kahela Hela. They have asked the Akua in the prayer, abide with us here, help us restore the abundance to this place. And so that's why the practice is so important. Even if it's a small practice, you make it, you do it, you go and do it. You say that prayer, acknowledging the Akua, bringing you fresh water, even, you know, picking the flowers, giving the flowers. On Mauna Kea, we don't give any flesh, right? You only give the flowers, the small kind of things like that. You know, as you ascend Mauna Kea, it's like an onion skin, yeah, the layers are peeled off. So as part of our ceremony in the Polo Hivas, the solstice and equinoxes, we start at the ocean, and it takes us all night. We stop at all of the ahus and the leles that the royal order has made, and then Mauna Kea and Ainoha has helped to align them to the heavens, yeah, to the stars. And then when we get to the top, we are the whole kupu because there is nothing more to give to Akua than yourself, right? And people always ask, Kelo, what's, this, what's the protocol? And I'm like, where? And they say, Mano Kea, what's the protocol? I said, well, there's many protocols, but the protocol, the main protocol is shh. You don't need to talk in Akua's realm. We listen over there. We're not allowed to speak about anything polit political or anything like that. We only speak of Akua and creation. And sometimes we laugh and we sing, we cry, and we dance. We're allowed to do all that. <laughs> but basically, it's going through that journey of going through all the levelanis, the levels of the heavens, from the Vaukanaka in the sea all the way up. And so I'm so happy to see the surfers for you know, coming out and doing that, saying the ma acknowledging Malka to Makai, because we really need Aloha Aina to be Malka to Makai, not just old Malka. No. What about, because what happens here affects there and vice versa. The water of the Mauna belongs to the fish of the sea. So I think um, when we hold these things within us, we begin to embody the aloha. And sometimes we go out, I mean, come on, you know, we're human. And then we have each other to help remind us, oh, where are you going with that sister? <laughs> and help us come back. Oh, sorry, sorry, I've been out. But come back in, no biggie. So part of it is, is I would say, kapu aloha opening the way for our compassion to lead the way and aloha to lead the way because those are the things that are going to heal us and heal the earth and us to heal each other. And so to me, that is the kapu aloha. And I hope that's the one we want to, to raise up within our heart and then to share everywhere. Is that good? <laughs> Mahalo. <laughs> Mahalo to you. <laughs> so if anyone has any questions and you're okay with being filmed because we are being live to bed, um, you can ask them now. Um, anything about Kapu Aloha. I know we have a lot of Ohana from our school here, so that would be great if, if any of you had any questions.
Can I just say something about, I'm just so really thrilled that you folks, you know, want to look at Kapu Aloha as being a part of your school. This is a huge thing, a huge thing. And mahalo for doing that. And any questions? <laughs> Come on, you guys. The uncomfortable silence. Yeah. Um, yes. So actually, my ohana and a friend of ours, we are going to go up like the same yeah. again, specifically because of this commitment for a couple of ohana, that if we're going to talk about it, to so actually go and make that commitment as an ohana in that space. Yeah. You know, so have have people, and I know like at Vai Vai on Wednesdays, now people who've been up, they're creating a safe space for them to talk about what that experience was. Mm -hmm. So just your personal experience of what are people talking about that have been up there, that have come back down, that have, I've heard everything from kind of being a little disoriented to, you know, it's, it's I think it's like a process to bring it back down here too. Yes. So just what are some of your thoughts on that process of bringing it, like literally into our homes and to other I know? You know, I think, I think it is a process. And um, as, you, as you go into the level, you know, you're transformed. You're really literally transformed as, um, as it is like even with, when you come into contact, say with a whale or a night, you know, how it really shifts you and you're not, you're like, whoa, whoa, how did that happen? Same thing with the Mauna. But it's, it's benevolent too. So, you know, as you are transforming, and you're feeling the transformation kind of heavily as you come back down because you, you hit the heavy <coughs> oxygen. You, a lot of times people just want to sleep and they should sleep because it helps integrate it, you know? Uh, when, when you go to the lake, for example, everyone sleeps. I tell you, everyone sleeps. You just conk out. And I, for a long time, I, I, I had slept originally, but then I had done it so long that I no longer slept, but everyone would sleep, and I'd just let them sleep for a while. And then after a while, they'd wake up like this, <laughs> and they'd be like, wow, how long have I been sleeping? Like, their whole time sense is off. And then, then you know what? They go down, and then they remember everything that came to them. You know, it's just, it, it really is um, a, a process. And so I think the first thing everyone needs to do is just be gentle with themselves and let themselves be, like if they have to go to the ocean, let them go to the ocean, you know, all those kinds of things. And then the, the ike is gonna come because that's really, you get the huge downloads when you go up there. And sometimes they're, it's disorienting because, and you know, so <laughs> we have, we, the, the, Mauna, the Mauna medics, they have plenty of people, but one of the things is that there's kind of pupule people who are attracted to come up there and um, so, you know, they have to malama them. And we're all malama them. <laughs> like, uh-oh, there's somebody over there. It's okay, <laughs> you know, oh, auntie, can I help you? you know? <laughs> and some of the kiai, they're so sweet because we, if we have to, you know, call the, the officers, we basically are saying, now these are, they're under the kapu aloha. And so we're not asking you to arrest them. We're just asking you to help take them home. Right, because there's some, some things that are just a little bit more than, than all of us can handle because the medics have to handle everything up there, right? They're very powerful, by the way. I'm so proud of our medics. I need to just say that out loud. How awesome they are. They bring la'au up also. And so they're using traditional medicine as well as, you know, formal doctors that are in there. And Kalama Oka'ina is the, the Mauna medic organizer, you know, and so I just want to say something really nice about them, but we just, I think the most important thing is to be gentle with yourself in the process of coming down. It's, it's just, you know, that, I mean, the whole space of the Mauna is um, really vawakua, and when we go up there, we have to kind of adjust ourselves to whatever their, that mana is doing. And it, it's, um, it's pretty intense, I think, also. But in a good way. Any other questions? Yes. Well, we're all Makua. Yes. Um, but I'm just wondering, for Kapu Aloha, I appreciate what, what you guys are trying to 
know, teach and put out there. Being in this city, yeah. how can we help our teenagers appreciate it as Mokua would? Well, oh, that's a really good question. Just because I know mm -hmm. they go up, and mm -hmm. I, I know my kids will go up, and my 26-year-old went up, and she had an she entered a class and had an like amazing experience. She was crying the whole time. But <laughs> yeah. so I want to take them some, you know, at yes. we can. And I just want them to appreciate it the way we would. You know, we get it because we've been around long enough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As teenagers, it's, sometimes they don't understand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One time I had um, at-risk children. I, I went to talk to them about the Mauna, but their teacher was ma'a to going up with us during ceremony so she's like take them up can you take them up Kelo? and I'm like oh yeah okay yeah and so I said let me call the uncles so that they can do you know the uh, the male part of the ceremony and then you know well I'll do the female side and the uncles couldn't come but there was one young man he's was I think probably 10 or no, no, I think he was 12. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I want to go, Auntie. I'll go. I know how to do it. Because he was been, has been going up since he was six. Oh. <clears throat> and so he really did know how to. And I was like, OK, <laughs> we go. So me and him went. And so when we were at Halipohaku, we went all the way from the bottom. And they were all yucking it up and blah, 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 blah acting any kind, right? <laughs> They're at risk kids. And then he turns to them and he goes, all right, everybody, this is when it really gets serious. <laughs> and I was kind of like, and then he, and they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they would come kind of seasick, right? Uh-oh, they got to get sick. Uh-oh, they're feeling all funny kind, right? And then they, they, they push through it. We all push through it. We still go all the way to the top. And when they came down, they made not only a video of what they were what their whole experience, but they made a song. They just wrote this song. Yeah, how you? How you? <laughs> oh no, good to see. Oh, oh, ma, I don't know. <laughs> no, should I put it on? I put them on. Okay, ma. Oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I might have to just like let it go like that. Okay, undo it. But um, aloha. Sorry, sorry. Somebody help me over here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just don't want to just leave it over there. Thank you. But you know what? It was so awesome. This, this song that they made was really. <laughs> Sorry. 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 <laughs> I brushing my hair, so I'm like, okay. <laughs> Thank you. I just rushedly, rushedly put it on. I hope that it's not. Orin, is it going to mess up the speaker? No, it's okay. Anyways, um, anyways. All good. Um, they wrote this amazing song. They wrote the music, they wrote the song, and they titled it as one. And I, I sometimes post it, it's on YouTube. And these were at-risk kids that were really having a hard time in the system. You know, it's not because they're not, they're brilliant. It's not because they aren't smart. It's because they, they had cognitive dissidents in the world being Kanaka children facing how do I live in a world that is so incongruent with my nature. And so, so that experience is what I want to say, is they, the Akua, speak to them and they will get all kinds of Ikes and they will bring them down for, for you and I, you know, in ways that, and, and then when they come home, they will go to the power places like the ocean to the Mauna, to the mountains, to to the springs, to all of those places to to connect. We got to do it. Even in on Oahu, I know it's hard, cause the you know, but the beauty of this Aina still is everywhere. You know, it's it's um, one time we had this experience of going to this little place where we had fought to save the ponds, the alkaline ponds. The Opai Ulas, yeah. And we just haven't gone back because it's hard to see that just a little pond is there and all these buildings, right? But when we went there, Kale, 
um, my partner had said, I'm going to sit over here for a while. And I was just kind of hoka, right? Because I'm like, oh, we fought all this time and look at this poor thing, you know. And the EK came out was, don't leave the beach. It's hard for us to go to those places where there's so much tourists and we feel challenged and all of that. But the thing is, is the kupuna are still there waiting for us. And when she was there, all the birds came, you know, all of these things came speaking to us. And so we need to take that to heart and say, hey, wait a minute. We just need to roll up on the beach and say, Hawaiians in the house. Aloha, everybody. How are you doing today? Don't mind if we bring our kula, open up. You know what I mean? Come by va'a. Come any way you want. Take up Waikiki. Go there. Don't be afraid that just because the tourist is over there, so what? Invite them in. Take them home. Tell them what real aloha is. Look at that luau over there. Well, I mean, some of our people got to work over there. But what I'm saying is, you know, get our people to do the real deal. Because it's time for us to reclaim our aloha back from the tourist authority. They, they don't can use it like that anymore. They need to stop because it's not real. It's the fakeality, not the re reality. So we huli it. We got to huli it. And our kids are going to huli that because they're going to come from that position of power that we're trying to open up now, you know? And if we keep opening it and they help us open it, they're going to be free too, you know? So that's, that's the way we got to do it, I think. Not be afraid. You know, so I think Big Island, because we have a lot of space, <laughs> like Oahu fits in one of our districts, <laughs> Puna, right? <laughs> but, you know, um, one thing that does for us is that, you know, lets us not be afraid. You know, I know that some of our people feel like they might get mad, so they want to kind of protect themselves. But righteous indignation is Kapu Aloha. When you have to speak to it, speak to it. You know, one of the things that we started to do is say, I saw these Haole people put thing, they run over the little Japanese kupuna, like, the, you know, she's really tiny and she's moving in the little cart, and they just ran her over, and I was just like, what? Oh, hell no, right? So I follow them all the way, I'm like, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> I'm like, excuse me, my name's Kealoha, where are you from? And they're like, we're from Waimea. And I said, no, that's where you live. Where are you from? <laughs> and I just said, you know, you just didn't run over the kupuna over here. And I, I don't know how you do it where you're from, but in Hawaii, this is how we do it. It's always better to be aloha than it is to be on time. So please don't run over our kupuna over here. And you know what they said? They looked at me like, oh! like that. And I was just like, go ahead, bring it. What you gonna say? <laughs> And I was like, <laughs> and you know what they said? They went, oh my God, you're so right. And I'm like, I was kind of pulling you, but like, I'm like, okay. And they're like, we came here just so that we wouldn't do things like that. And thank you for telling us. And we're so sorry. And I said, well, you better do tell her that. But mahalo. Thank you. Welcome to Hawaii. <laughs> you know, this is our homeland. And we just need to welcome them. But we got to school them. Mm -hmm. Like, this is how we do things here. But we've been forced, this is part of our oppression, is that we've been forced to have to be like, no make ways. You know, plantation was bad, but plantation was also good for us. What I mean by that is it made us resilient. And so much people, you know, speak negatively about it. But, you know, on Big Island, I asked one of our kupuna one time, I was interviewing him. I said, Uncle Genesis, tell me what was the hardest thing you had to do as a Kanaka man? I thought it was a pretty normal question. He sat for a moment and he went cry. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry, Uncle. We, we don't have to answer that question because I was worried, like, well, oh, what did I say? And then he said, no, no, I want to answer this question. I said, okay. 
So he told me the story of what it was like in the war when he would sign up. You know, he went to Kamehameha Schools, which was a military school in the beginning, right? And so he naturally went into the war thinking that was the right thing to do. But he said the first thing that happened to him was that he and other Kanakas were sent on a mission to remove all the people from the camps, to be put in the internment camps. And I was like, oh, oh gosh, right? And he said, and on Big Island, we had mixed camps. So some camps were only like Japanese camps. Some were mixed camp, all different ethnicity. So they had to go all the Kanaka men. They sent the Kanaka men to go and get them. So what the people did, they had to put out all of their furniture, and then they had to stand next to it and just <coughs> be taken. So uncle said, when they went in the camps, all the people put all of their furniture outside and they stood and they said, we're Japanese, you won't take us. And uncle go, he said that was so hard because he's like, they know everybody, right? And they're like, please don't do this. We have to do our job. They go, this is crap and you know it. These are neighbors, our ohana, what, what you doing? So that was his hardest moment, that he had to participate in oppressing another people because he was in American US military. You know what I mean? And I thought to myself, oh my God, of all the things that uncle could tell me is that that was the hardest one. But then he also told me the story of how our people hid them, some families, they were hidden. And some families, they took care of their stuff so that when they returned, they could have it back. Mm -hmm. It wasn't all confiscated. And so that's actually how some of them, when we have problems, we call them and they make the call. Because Big Island was just different like that. I don't know how the other islands were, but I know on Big Island that that's why, to be honest with you, that's why I could say what I said to the governor. You were raised here. You know our history and you know the rules and you violated them because he did. Because he's not supposed to be that. He's a part of this ohana. Like everyone here is our people. Not only Kanaka. We have to look at it that way. Because truthfully, they're in the boundaries of our kingdom, where we actually have treaties. Not just we lacking the treaty of annexation, but how about the treaties of mutual respect and recognition, the treaties of commerce and navigation, the treaties that are bigger than the American, so-called American boundaries. So let's come from that position of power, like this is the kingdom, and this is how we roll. This is not how you roll. This is how we roll, and this is how we have to roll, because this is what the Aina says to do. And we just do what the Aina says. What the Aina needs, we need, because we and the Aina are one. You know what I mean? We come from that. And we invite them to participate with us in that, because that's really what we're doing. It's not about the telescope. It's about the destruction of the Aina that we can't have it anymore. It's just too much. So, sorry, I went far off that question. <laughs> but, yeah. No, you, you, it, it's, just, it's just like us freeing ourselves to be ourselves and not be in that colonial mindset. That point you make is so important because our, our kiki, mm -hmm. the, like Opio, and then now we have kiki. Mm -hmm. When we can stand in that clarity, yeah. They know that we call call maha eha. Right. They're like, oh, wait. Yeah. Wait, Bali. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, America. Oh, aloha. Yeah. No problem. No problem. Right, because because we're we're establishing our truth, yes. and therefore how they are to engage, engage. in that truth. Yeah.
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I had like two questions over there. One would be like, can you talk about like a couple of like a strategy, actually, like a political strategy? I think that he's like Gandhi and Martin Luther King used it as a strategy. And I think it kind of like, I'm sure it's purposeful and intentionally, but like I feel like it's a meaningful strategy. Um, one and then two, like. What could couple look at look like at a school? What would it, if we had to imagine what it looked like at a school? I teach at Puno. I just came here to learn yeah. what it was all about. And it was my first time at La Pumana. Got a little lost. <laughs> it was so weird yeah. somewhere. Like yeah. Beautiful, you know? And so I just thought of it those two things. What could couple look what is, what would it imagine? What does it look like? Whether it be like interactions with parents, teachers, curriculum or just the feeling, or just how we treat one another. You know, I'm just trying to get to pick your brain about what that could, those yeah. questions, what would it look like as a, a political movement, and what could it look like at a school? As a political movement? Or strategy. As a strategy. There's definitely strategy in it, but it's by, by its organic. natural, yeah, it's organic. Design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like because. Yes, exactly. I think so. I think so. I just want to add to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm a former legislator. Um, I think that it's a game changer because it's confused everybody. <laughs> and they don't know how to respond. Mm -hmm. And I, I just had a conversation with somebody recently who said it's within their right to arrest everybody. Um, well, my first response said, well, go ahead and see what happens. <laughs> Let's all see what happens because the whole world is watching now. Right. I don't know how you're going to do that. Yeah. But secondly, why would you? Um, it's the person said, well, they shouldn't be blocking the entrance. I said, but don't you understand that every protest in the world, mm -hmm. there's some form of violating some existing law mm -hmm. that's not effective? Because if they stood on the side of the road, what point would that be, right? But if you look mm -hmm, around the mm -hmm. world, what's happening now? Yeah. Like in Thailand, the police laid down with the yeah. people they're supposed to arrest. Mm -hmm. So it's becoming a very um, the Hawaiian sense of place, the Hawaiian sense of people. Now the Hawaiian sense of ethic and behaviors is now manifesting through mm -hmm. Kapolo. That's mm -hmm. how I see it. Mm -hmm. And it's it, it's very confusing to everybody because I think it's easier to justify arrest when mm -hmm. Kuhi and it's become a little aggressive. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that's not going to happen because I don't know. And Kuhi does serve its purpose. Mm -hmm. um, but Kapu Aloha I think is it's a beautiful paradigm shift that's mm -hmm. happening. I think reminding people like when I went to the Mauna um, I felt compelled not to take photographs. Because mm -hmm. I started I don't want it to become a circus. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to become Okay, we all forgetting why we're here, mm -hmm. but the couple of the code has actually reminded everybody why they're there. Right. So it serves a lot of different, um, in, in a lot of different levels. But politically, I don't think it ever was meant to be a strategy, but it's definitely an absolutely good strategy <laughs> organically. Mm -hmm. And and what I can say, I, I I love exactly what you're saying. They don't have tools because. Um, they just don't. They don't have tools to make peace and to be in peace. They have tools only to deconstruct, to, you know, come at you at full force frontal assault. Yeah. And they come unraveled when you're saying, well, go ahead, come at me. I'm going to take it. That's my sacrifice. I'm going to take that hit for a better world because I know you don't really want to hit me and w what do we do with that you know I mean it was a discipline it's a discipline though because yeah. um, you know they're looking for justification to execute their what they are empowered to do but we're pushing back Gandhi said at one point he said to be truly free you have to free the oppressed as well as the oppressor it's like, it's like Mandela in the, you know, the truth and reconciliation. You know, the, the, the amazing thing about the truth and recon reconciliation process is it's not about forgiving them. It's about freeing our heart. You know, you know what I mean? Same thing in this one. 
I was mad when I read that, like, Gandhi, what are you saying? Now I've got to carry up high the oppressor stuff? Hello, how do I do that? But what he's really saying is that you're freeing them by reflecting their violence so that they can see it and everyone else can see it. So we're, Hawaii is not ma'a to that kind of violence, so they're a little bit nervous. Like, well, you know what I mean? The word we have is they were like, don't arrest the kupuna. Because they know that everyone, regardless of your ethnicity, you're going to be like, oh my god, you didn't arrest the elders. It turned a lot of people. Yeah, and people are like, what? So when they had to do it, it was awful for them. Because, you know, those dual care officers sat in our contested case hearing for 44 days. They know who we are. They heard our stuff. They didn't want to do it. I, I mean, that's just my feeling. I can't speak for them. But I saw many of them away. Um, they didn't want to have to do it. And then the attorney general, and yeah, Claire, that's me, I'm telling you, when throw her own people under the bus, send up the riot police, who went into something, and you know, there's all kinds of talk about what the riot police are talking, big talk now, but really the truth is, is, is that the Kiai just, see, let me be correct. We're not blocking the road, they're blocking us. And so all we can do is sit in front, right? <laughs> but okay, let everyone think that it's us blocking the road. It's really that we are not even being allowed up our mauna. We worked out a deal. And for the record, I want to say it out loud, the astronomers have been allowed to go up all this time. In fact, they came down voluntarily and now are ooh, 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 claiming on our backs, yeah, that we weren't letting them up. They came down because they was afraid of people who are completely unarmed. You know, if anyone should be afraid, it would be us guys. But okay, that's propaganda. But keeping the truth, keeping the truth out there. You know, when, when the riot police came up, they realized they couldn't go down because the kiai had just moved into the road. <laughs> Not to block them in, but to block the trucks from coming up. But then the, the riot police had to come up and say, um, we'll pull out if your guys will let us out. <laughs> and we said, what are you guys seeing? Yeah, OK. So everybody pulled back, and then they went. But now look at the story they make, trying to make in the news. It, they were outnumbered. They're outnumbered every day because, you know, the camp basically is about 400 to 500 people normally. And then it goes up to 7,000 people and then it comes back down. You know, it, it's all up and down. It depends on where people are at the time. But it's that goodwill. So, so the first thing you need to do is establish goodwill and establish protocol for how goodwill can be expressed and moved in the school itself. And people need to know that they're, they will tend to operate in the old way, zero sums, winners, losers, all of that. There's people that you can actually call upon, like, is it Ku'ume Aloha Gomes, who make Ailike, which is a consensus building process. We kind of use, we were trained by Ku'ume Aloha a long time ago, and we kind of have a hybrid Big Island version. But Ku'ume Aloha is over here. And, and you can call upon those people to come and help you build consensus in your community, wherever it is, because that's kapu aloha too. It's, it's, it's um, leveling the playing field so that everyone's issues can be heard and then re believe in the goodwill of the consensus. Because when people, people have a hard time at first speaking their truth because they're not used to speaking it. So you need to create a safe space where truth can be spoken. And then once you do that, the goodwill takes hold. And you keep teaching about kapu aloha and, and a way to build peace and agreement. And when you have a good process, it pretty much comes out good. I mean, all the times I've seen extreme you know, views, 
you know, someone dominating over here. When you level the playing field and everyone has a fair opportunity to speak and be heard, you can find agreement. The big mistake people always make is they start with what they disagree with. You have to start with building agreement so that people understand that there's more agreement than there is disagreement. Look at the Middle East is a classic example of that. The U.S. goes, let's make peace accords, let's have conversations as if they hold the moral high ground on that. But they go and they go over there and say that to them. And then the first thing they say, let's start with the Gaza Strip. <sighs> no peace. No peace. You know, the, the thing that would be good is just for those people to come together to make their own peace. Don't let America keep trying to, because they don't want peace. It works for them to have unpeace. That's a new word, unpeace. <laughs> no peace. Yeah. <laughs> no, hey, hey, I know, I know the teachers can, but I, I can help. I think about, you know, a lot of it, yeah, this is the conversation in the beginning, it's very powerful, but a lot of what you said earlier, and then, you know, um, I think we just probably need some curriculum. Maybe not from you, but you should be a part of this. As well. Oh, no, I would totally help, but wherever I can. But, you know, I mean, we have a lot. Okay, what we want to do is we want to build, we want to teach the teachers to go and teach and teach more. You know what I mean? And it's going gonna, it's gonna to catch on, you know. Um, but I, I do see that there's, when people don't have an experience of it, they have no perception. So they need to see it in action and then they'll go, oh, because it, 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 it's within us. The peace is the default. You know, that's what, cooperation is a default, not competition. That was brought on by I don't know, some white fellas that were political philosophers who, who said life would be nasty, brutish, nasty, and short or something. John Locke, I think, is his name. I wrote about him in one of my classes. I said, John Locke has mama issues. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, he, he didn't feel love. You know, that, sorry. Not that it, that's it, though. So when you ask about um, you know, building curriculum Aloha as a um, strategy, it really, what, what we're experiencing in this time is helping us to remember yeah. that. So what Keloha is describing right now, this is the default. This is the default. We are so far removed from the dirt under our feet that yeah. we forget what our default is because we've been immersed in this goo for yeah. a long time. And so Kapu Aloha um, is perhaps a, a strategy, is something that can help people organize and um, convey or uh, mobilize, then okay, we can call it a strategy. However, Kapu Aloha is when you look at what's happening, it, it really is about aole desecration to your mm -hmm. own self, mama yeah. issues, you know. Like I like that, yeah, yeah. Because in order for us to build a curriculum or to build a school or to build an ohana, you start right here. Mm -hmm. And so the strategy would be even in a school yeah. to begin right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you're a makua, then you do it. If you're a makua, then be that makua. You're the kumu, then be the kumu. Mm -hmm. And clean your own house first. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. my hana, you know, just, mama, and do it in a very mm -hmm. gentle way. It really, no more desecration. It really is about humanity mm -hmm. and the rule of law. Mm -hmm. So, curriculums. And Maoli Ola. And that's Maoli Ola. That is Maoli Ola. Wellness, wellness. Yeah, I guess yeah. like the, the strategy seems like it's a purposeful thing. You're trying to manipulate and do things where a tool, like I think you mentioned earlier, whether it be in the classroom, whether you kind of just 
are the tool. You know, exactly. you kind of yes. Just, yes. You know, and um, yeah. just hearing you speak, it's like, I don't know if strategy is the right word because mm. it's a toolbox. Yeah. People aren't, I think she mentioned about people aren't prepared for having mm -hmm. that type of tool for peace. Mm. Cause like maybe it's a tool, but a political tool, an educational tool, you know, it seems like it's like multi-purposeful tool that starts yeah. with us that can be used in multiple ways. I'm just thinking yeah. that right now. Yeah, go ahead. Right. But Candace. I mean, in the way that it's strategic, is it's a calling in instead of a calling out. Mm. So I was thinking about when Luana Busby um, went to Lino Kamako and he said, mm. she said to him, that was like the ultimate moment of Kapolo, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. She says, Kapolo is for you. Yes. Because you have the name of our great historian. Mm -hmm. yeah. She mm -hmm. called him in, and in the end, he, he cried. No, he exactly. Cried. See, yeah, I told everyone to watch Kapu Aloha 101 because it, 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 you can see it in action. You can see it in action. You just Google OEV TV Kapu Aloha 101 and um, yeah, Luana's thing. And see, what I was saying earlier is that Kapu Aloha creates the space for compassion to be restored because basically what we're living under is total insanity in the world, dominated by the corporate structure. Even our police force is actually being used by the state to defend a corporate structure, not human life. So, you know, there is insanity, and let me confirm, the craziness we feel every day is real, but we don't have to be victims of it if we take control. So Kapu Aloha is about taking our own control of our life, I think, and and recognizing, you know, the kupuna used to say, you know, um, Auntie Kamaka used to say, Ke aloha. why you say aloha all the time? And I said, why Auntie? Why are you asking me that? <laughs> and she goes, do you always mean aloha when you say it? <laughs> and I was like, what? I think so, Auntie. <laughs> she said, you know, because you can also just say, ano ai. I recognize the godhood in you. Ano ai. <laughs> I'm like, oh, uh, that's interesting. But I do kind of feel aloha. Sort of, kind of. Yeah, at least I'm saying it for myself. <laughs> I want to feel it. Maybe, maybe I'm not feeling it so much and I want to feel it. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we're not always there every day. We're just irritated and we don't want to deal with it. But by invoking it, it helps me to deal then, it too, you know. And, you know, it's, it's okay to say, I'm not really feeling it today. I might need help today. You know, because all these, these, these mind things that say you got to be strong, and this is all, all this kind of stuff it's like don't feel anything you're too vulnerable it's too touchy feely hey i used to be like that it's too touchy feely like i don't they asked me in when i was learning ailike hey kelo how do you feel I'm like, i don't have any feelings <laughs> so for three days they kept just trying to break me down kelo we're so happy we love your ano how do you feel i'm like I don't have any feelings, and if I did, I wasn't going to stare them with everybody over here <laughs> i was kind of like that because you know i grew up Things had to be hard. But I also had really loving kupuna who taught me the strength is in, in, in the love. And when, you know, I want to share something with you in the prayer every day that you say, when you ask the akua to abide with you, you say, you know, akua, abide with me so that that which is contrary does not exist simultaneously. The dualities that we see in the world are changing. So even the duality is a part of the wholeness because it may just bring up the shadow that we need to see to be healed. So don't be afraid, in other words, to have shadow even when it's coming at you. You're like, whoa, okay, I gotta deal with that shadow. Because, you know, um, people think it's all just roses and, but there's, there's points where so somebody gets triggered, you got you to gotta hold on to them and say it's okay to be triggered and cry with them and away 
with them. And then they will come out of it. And then we're all together, you know what I mean? So I think what needs to change a little bit is this hard exterior that everybody's trying to, you know, hold up out there. It's totally okay not to be in that hardness, but to be vulnerable, actually. That is a strength. So it's turning what appears to be a weakness into a strength. I was going to say, I think there's something with like source and mechanism. And to me, Kabbalah is source. And that's my only, that's not even a concern in sense of curriculum, but I think the, this modern day overlay that we're so separated from our na'al and things like let me read the thing of how to do it yeah, yeah, yeah. continues very often I think to separate us so the oh. source is kapuloha and in a school or in another you know you could have the mechanism yeah. in mm. one school that the expression of kapuloha might look a certain way be, but I think it's important it's because that group agrees that that's the expression that works for them but I think we have to get to the point where you know what kapuloha is for yourself without any explanation mm. or like it's not mm -hmm. going to look the same in halal kumana as it does in punaho as it does anywhere else and like it's mm. it's to me i guess it's that feeling of it's the discipline to hold that line mm -hmm. of what you know in your na'al is mm -hmm. right period mm -hmm. it's the process so like even when you feel uncomfortable you don't move away from that because mm -hmm. you're afraid you're not going to get the outcome you wanted. Like the, the ultimate right. commitment is that everyone makes is to that process. Mm -hmm. Almost like a whole pono pono mm -hmm. to me, we're like, I don't care how uncomfortable it is. We're going to just be here and we're going to keep <laughs> having aloha in the way we move through the discomfort. Yeah, yeah. And I guess that was really powerful to me at the beginning where you said alo it's aloha in action. Mm -hmm. It's um, And to me, aloha, right, is not soft and fuzzy. Like aloha is... Yeah. Oh, it's, true. it's all these things together and you can't have truth. I mean, it's going to come, it's duality. It's going to yeah. come with all of these things and like it's without judgment. And so I get, I think in the training of it yeah. is important. There is a certain amount of like curriculum so that mm -hmm. everyone agrees on the terms and they get what they're signing up for. And they, mm -hmm. I guess as a training to be like a teacher of Kapu'aloha, but that would be my only concern is to jump into like curriculum too soon and bypass the fact that I think everyone in this room, if you really got quiet with yourself, would know what that is. And I mm -hmm. thought, you know, for Halal Kumana, when we had our first La Ohana the other day, it was really different for me than it has been for several years. And so it doesn't mean that we're all perfect and amazing. We're not going to have our moments. But when the number one objective was this school is going to be a loving space environment, period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Tomorrow we can talk about math, and the next day we can talk about the school code. If you do X, Y, and Z, and you're going to get a pink slip. But like that is all the mechanics, right? That's the mm -hmm. mechanism. The mm -hmm. source is we all agreed on this one thing. Mm -hmm. And maybe this isn't the school for you if you cannot choose to embody this is a safe and loving space, period. And it's kind of like I don't, I don't, I really highly doubt I'd have to list out the things for you that would be the opposite like we all know what that is so mm. it feels to me right there's source mm -hmm. and mechanism so there's lots of ways we could express kapuloha but yes it's what is that you still got to find that the <sighs> seed of it like what that is it just feels like when you find that that's how you stand there when mm -hmm. someone is arresting your kupuna and not want to punch them like or not yeah. do it is because yeah. you found that space and there's that something greater that you've mm -hmm. committed to i mean no curriculum is gonna yeah like well it's just the like curriculum thing was just because there's so many distractions going on <coughs> oh yeah the media you have all these different things that you just want to organize it just, yeah, yeah and i'm not saying that it. you know i'm just yeah, saying yeah. that just to mm -hmm. not get caught up in like the book set yeah. Yeah. Kind of yeah 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 to, to write it on water it's just to some order it is, there's so much distractions going on. I mean, our school, mm -hmm. just honestly, within the last year, had a lot of issues. You know, I, I got to say that right off the bat. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, when you're looking at this, these issues and you think about things like Kapu Aloha, yeah. things that are very innate as Hawaiians, mm -hmm. and I feel like some of the response to it, yeah. especially from the Hawaiian people, because I hear a lot of times, even where I work at Kumeo, there's a lot of, there's the ones who have the Ike supposedly, they know the Hawaiian language, so on and so forth, and you have the other ones saying, well, I'm not paying a Hawaiian, you know. It still kind of goes on. So I think that the idea that culturally, 
a lot of Hawaiians tune in, right? Because it is in the, and you kind of mm-hmm. feel it. Mm-hmm. Right? There's a response behind it, because I've never seen this, right? And we've been in the movie since, I don't know, Kill I've known you since like 1992. Right? <laughs> but I just feel like there's just so much distraction going on. And my idea to bring up the idea of just maybe writing it down, maybe not curriculum or something, but just some kind of thing that we can kind of look at. Um, and particularly for our school is what I was kind of asking that for. Yeah, no, I I, I hear you. I yeah. And I'm not disagreeing. Yeah. Like, in a, you know, yeah, anyway. No, no. And, and I liked how you said, though, like, the source of that, though, is kind of what all the other religions talk about, too, right? There is, so it's like, a, it's an... Intellectualize it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's... um. Which is what educators tend to do because they're trying to teach it yeah and they have to break it down <laughs> yeah. into and into bite-sized pieces make it too yeah academic where it's gone yeah to yeah essence. but i i do think that um uh you know like i like this the source because even when we say resource so we want to change that language and we want to call it a source like water's not a resource it's a source of life aloha is what animates is that life too, you know. So um, we're gonna we're gonna change language by doing this, and and by everybody really putting their mind to it, they're gonna find all of its gifts. Because the the thing is, just like it's kind of endless. Like I'll walk out sometimes, and I'm looking at the mauna, and I'm just looking at the people. I feel like I'm in slow motion. I'm just seeing everything like that. And I just will start to ue joyously because I just go, gosh, just when I think I don't have any more space in my heart, it just pushes it open further, you know what I mean? And so it just keeps going like that. And a lot of times we're used to having to be in control of our life and everything around us because it makes us feel better because the world is kind of chaotic and out of control. So all the more reason we want to control. But you'll see that you don't need to control everything because it will, by its very nature, find an equilibrium. You know, and I was just searching YouTube to try to figure out where the O.E.V. was the other night, and guess who came up? Bruce Lee. (laughs) And I was like, wow, why is Bruce Lee on (laughs) right? And, And he's like, be like water. You know, he's like, when, when it's put in a vessel, it's the shape of the vessel when it's, you know. So, and I thought, whoa, that's kind of deep. I kind of needed to hear that right there because he's pretty much telling you that it ha- you have to flow like the water, you know. And just like, you remember how our kupuna, they would go in, in Oli to the ocean to, to, to feel the rhythm of it so that they could get the, the, the cadence of the Oli? In the pule, you are actually setting the vibration that sets you into alignment with the earth and the sky. You know, that's a practice that is one of those mechanisms that can help invoke those things is to be in that nature of the the sacred geometry of the earth and the planet, you know. Um, and you, that's how you come into alignment. So, um, I had a young man in San Francisco leave my talk and then I didn't know why he left. And when I went to the restroom, he stopped me and he said, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean to be rude when I left your talk, but I feel that I was going to alter the energy of your talk. And I was like, and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, okay, what, what, what's happening? Why would you alter the energy of my talk? And he said, because I, I have violence in my system. And I said, where does it come from? And he said, I don't know, video games. I played a lot of them when I was a kid and I was thinking, what? And I, I, I realized what he's saying. He was trying to protect the room from himself and I was like oh I just totally felt him right and he said no no he said what I said you do not alter yeah it was it was and so I said to him don't worry you don't have to carry that violence 
He goes, but how do I get rid of it? And I'm thinking, now I'm in the multidisciplinary science building. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. I'm looking around, I see all this science stuff. I'm like, I got it. I said, you know what? You go outside and you be with the trees. You know, all the beautiful trees around his campus, it was unreal. I said, they will restore your pono. The trees will restore your pono because they are pono, <laughs> you know what I mean? And if you tap into them, you go and lay under them and just give that out, give that away. You don't have to hold it, don't hold it anymore. I felt him and you know, his face changed. And I have a photograph of him. And then Uncle Liko was with me and he said, I know that boy. I held him like this. He came back in and he came to Uncle Liko because he, he, wanted, he was attracted to the kupuna. And Uncle Liko held him like that. And he said, no worries, boy. He didn't even know what I knew, but he already knew. And so the boy, I think, will hopefully go. The sacred geometry of the earth is the ocean, the wind, the mauna, you know, all of those things just transform us physically and put us back in. You know, the four walls sometimes become too much for us. So we got to go out and go and walk on the earth. That's part of it too, I think, you know, is that you, to, to invoke, to put us in a place of healing all the time. When we get out of that feeling, then we go back in there by going back into the, the nature. Yeah, no, like that. I love when you talk about being in alignment with the Akua. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if you could talk about how, what happens when that happens on the Mauna, when it, yeah. everything is in alignment. What Ho'ailona? Because sometimes, I don't know if it's a Ho'ailona or not, but... Okay, okay, <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> um, and I think for curriculum too, like teaching students how to recognize Ho'ailona, also a way yes. to in greater attunement mm -hmm. to the world around it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's not really like to write them how to do it. Yeah. It's just explain it. Because yeah. what I said earlier, yeah. mm -hmm. it should be maybe, I think, maybe at least some form of it. Like a guide. Or, or some just some kind of people's like experiences. Or, like, mm -hmm. You think about people's experiences. Yeah, that yeah, helps too. People never like write nothing down. I've yeah, <laughs> been experienced how like that. Like, I might not write nothing down, but yeah, it's almost like, you know, I think we need to, it would be good, I feel like. Some some form of it, you know. Maybe curriculum is a bad word, but I feel like something. Yeah. yeah. You have to be equal on someone Yeah. You cannot define that. No, but I think, but it's, I think we I can read stories, You though. can read other people's oh, stories. Yeah. Right, because when I read Kealoha stories, I'm like, oh my God. But you I just know. think, you know, not <laughs> a whole Ilona could be something totally for Individual. you that no one right. else yes. sees. Uh -huh. But yeah. I, that's where I think if you know it's someone's story, it helps you open your mind to what it could more be, more. as long as it's not like, and when two right? birds fly, that <laughs> means... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the nene. The nene. flocks of nene fly over, like 15 of them. One yeah. Time. And you know those nene? <laughs> Just so you know, they stop the bombing at Puakaloa. <laughs> because in, when I was a monitor, right? They're yeah. And they like to be in range one and two. Exactly, exactly. The, the, the thing would come over the radio, culturals. <laughs> it is, it is. We have to align with the... <laughs> no, but it's alignment. It's aligning with nature, right? And the animals, right? Because the, the, the Puakaloa, the, the that would come over the big microphone. Culturals in range one and two. <laughs> Culturals in range one and two. That meant they cannot bomb in range one and two. And I was like, yay, yeah, nay, nay. <laughs> and they were, they're, they're the whole Ilona for us over there. And then there was a huge Eva that flew like right over the tents, just came through and was just watching everybody. You know, when those things, that's what, that's what we're talking about, is when, when you see nature respond with us, then we know we're in alignment, you know? And 
Like the classic story is, um, you know, the symbol of the li is the rainbow, right? But what used to happen before, and not, not a lot of people talk about this, but there were special people who used to kahea to create the alignment to call forth the rainbow for the ali because once the rainbow was coming then they were aligning all of this so that the ali were walking in alignment you know you know what i mean not a lot of people talk about that but that's kind of where it was so auntie kamaka was famous about the rainbow and she used to say troll the rainbow <laughs> and we'd be like auntie what you mean by trolling the rainbow and she's like you gotta line it up Keloha. do the oli call it out and i i really didn't know what she was talking about but she 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 had us practice in the water and she'd say find the sound that resonates in the water like the poo, she would say. One poo, two poo, they blow. But they create a third sound that is beyond the resonance of each of the two. Find the resonance, find the resonance. So in the water, you go and you practice. Just try hakalamas, the a, a, e, o, u. Try to find the sound that will resonate in the water. I had no idea what she's talking about. So practicing, practicing. I don't get it, auntie, it's not working. Keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. <laughs> Then all of a sudden, I hit that point. The, the resonance means that you, you hear it go like this, whoosh, across the whole water. That's the one that made me jump out of the water. Whoa, Auntie, I heard it. She goes, I heard it too. <laughs> That's the one. So now I'll try to figure it out for all of, the, all of the elements. Where is that resonance? That's a part, that has to be a part of the practice because that is how we can determine that our, we're in alignment. Because we will see the ho'ailo now. that clarity that you are, what you're providing is a, an example, these are things that you already do. So when you right. say, when I was an observer, our kiki are taught to kilo. Yeah. That kilo is that, it's that kahua of, yeah that elevating so Kapoloha is a discipline to elevate no matter how how clear we believe mm -hmm. we are it's to elevate that body. yeah so what you're talking about is you're giving us an example of kilo mm -hmm. at that um, level yeah yes so it, it that's true our, our, we, mm -hmm. many of us what's so awesome about Kapoloha is it is not only providing us the opportunity to have a, a common name for this phenomenon, sort of phenomenon thing, right. um, but it, it's also giving us examples. And we, many of us are actually translators. Because yeah. a lot of us are, all, we all do this at yeah. differing degrees, different dimensions. And so when mm. you come here and you <coughs> share this, this is not Manao, this is Ike, this is like Oya Ipo. Yeah. We then are now not just gifted with this Mo'olelo, now we have Kuleana Kulana to, okay, we all got this now. So it's not like, oh, you're going to help us. You're going to, you're going to, I got to tell you, you're going to help me. Because we all have that capacity already. Just yes. Like virtue of sitting here. It's just triggering. It's just like um, invoking it and in, uh, giving ourselves permission to participate in it and then invoke it. Yeah. And you know what I mean? And, and it's going to build. It's going to become, it's greater than the sum of its parts. So it's going to keep building. And we just have to um, not be afraid to start somewhere and not be afraid to not know, but try to stay in alignment so that we do get that ike, that ike papa lua, you know, to, and then we invoke it. I think, I think what, what I'm talking about, probably I wish some of the kumus were here because, you know, they're so good at describing, well, I mean, you know, like, the, the, describing how, 
how it, it, it practices, like why, why, why practice at all? What is a practice? What does it mean? But basically, it's, it, we're going to have a practice of kapu aloha. That's a practice in and of itself to invoke the alignment and call into the peace into the world. It is the practice of unleashing the peace in the world and for, for ourselves and then for our ohana, then for our, our kopai aina, then for our honua, you know. We need to do it. We need to start somewhere, so let, we, let it start with us, right? And yeah. It's from just a couple of people that have come back have shared with me and just in a teacher sense. Mm -hmm. So even though we could talk about, you know, the police officer, like bigger expressions of kapuraha, but a number of people, it's about olelo. And they're mm -hmm. like, the way kapuraha is just in everything that you do when you're up there. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, no, people are speaking Hawaiian or asking to learn. She's like, there's a whole... Like that feeling like if I don't know, I can't ask or like a hierarchy of who talks or can you speak Olelo or not? Dividing. Yeah, it's yeah. been mm -hmm. a very discreet those thing those that have a number of people have said like, yeah, for the first time I felt like it was okay if I didn't speak, if I was learning to speak. And it wasn't even like people were saying that to each other. Oh, this is like, it was just the way people mm -hmm. were right. and mm -hmm. like I said when when three four even when the fifth person was saying this I was like oh where it was like just felt safe right and it, like, like I said and it wasn't a con yeah. not labeled right it wasn't even that people were saying that oh yeah, you're yeah, free yeah. to talk it's it a just was a it's not like I'm in couple yeah 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 it's behavior it's almost intangible right and they were kind of like oh it like that was I felt connected or like I could learn right like it Not was a safe a total safe right. space and so maybe in a teaching sense right that's like whatever mm -hmm. that safe space is where people can say I don't know or what whatever you know um, mm -hmm. but I want to say like multiple people have said that specifically but it's also I think the, the repetition right mm -hmm. so like every protocol same thing right mm -hmm. every protocol mm -hmm. so, I mean you don't hear something different Mm -hmm. Other than the olio, you know what I mean? Like, like, but you hear the same. Antipua talks about kapoloha the same way. She talks about the hu and the rising mm -hmm. the same way. Four times a day, the same way. And uh, never raising her voice. Mm -hmm. Even when she wants hamau kaleo. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. wants hamau kaleo. She's not like, hamau kaleo. I mean, <laughs> she's like screaming it. She's like, hamau kaleo. Yeah. That's, that's just it. And so I think... That modeling of that and that constant reminding of that is what makes us kind of all just gravitate to that because mm -hmm. you see it. You see mm -hmm. it displayed, you hear it, you hear it the same way every protocol, you hear it, you see it, you hear it, you see it, and so it's like you live it because it's always present. Mm -hmm. It's easy though when we're up there, right? <laughs> yeah. right, no, right. And I just have to say, yeah. Antipur case is like, like the Energizer Buddy man, she just, <laughs> she just, uh, it's 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 a phenomenon. She's amazing. But it's aloha. I mean, you know, she's being powered yeah. by the aloha. You know, really, I, I just like, boy, are you okay? She's like, uh, you know, because it's tiring yeah. to to. But you know, there's there's also that it's empowering and it's um, inspiring. But um, the trick is up there. It is easier because it's Papalanese. Yes. But so what? Because yeah, yeah. this is Valkanaka. So there's a difference, and yet Akua is, I believe, asking for us to bring it to everywhere, right? Because we've had the separation, but now it is that it's, we need to bring it everywhere, yeah. So that's, that's part of the task that we're all going to participate in is how do we bring it? you know, embody it, I think is the way, because then that's how you move it, because there is a difference between being aloha and moving aloha. And I've, you know, I, I've had to, to say to some people, okay, how do you move aloha? Invoke it and move it. And it becomes a force, a force that is, because there's a reason why those officers uwe, because they feel it. 
and it, their gun means nothing at that point, you know? And so that's that force that we are having to invoke and be a part of and then invite them, the compassion to them because they are a part of our family, you know? It's when we start to separate that we then stop that flow, you know? And um, yeah, Uncle Calico always says for, he says it like this, for you to win us, you have to out aloha us, in which case <laughs> we win anyways. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's a classic. You know, we need to make a meme that says that, you know, the uncles and aunties just are filled with these wisdom memes, you know, that was like, oh my God, you know, quotes for days, I mean, quotes, quotables, you know, you know, t-shirts that, you know, they just keep reminding them, but you, you, you just got to fall in love with it because it's like, he said it in the, in the contested case hearing, you know, in front of everyone. And we were just like, that's right. <laughs> you know, to out aloha us, we win anyways. So, you know. Post Kaho Olabe, there are a lot of fractured relationships. And to this day, some of them exist. I don't know if people are aware of that. I don't know if people mm -hmm. were old enough to see that whole process. But mm -hmm. So, one of the questions this morning that another Wahine leader asked me was how will we couple aloha each other? Right. After this has moved forward, yeah. Right, right, right. To remember the, not to do it the way we did it before. Right. That we gotta make, build bridges again for the mm -hmm. next generation. Also, we're gonna stay stuck. Yeah. And distracted in the wrong thing. No, that's so powerful what you're saying. Yeah. That is what we have to do. Is we have to let go of the that um, fraction. I mean, the pathology work we're working under is the US model and so there are certain ways it, that we've developed in how we live that just emulate that model and perpetuate that and we got to stop perpetuating that because it doesn't work for anyone including the the perpetrators of it you know what I mean the the grand perpetrators of it honoring disagreements too yeah it's totally okay to be di in disagreement. It's how you, it's how you learn to uh, undo the disagreement, you know? So we're almost out of time, actually, everyone. And I want to, um, mahalo, kialoha. Kialoha, you, you want to wrap it up with something, uh, something you want to do this with? Um, well, it's pressure. <laughs> 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 um, no, I, you know, you folks already know it's inside and I just want to encourage everyone to start with themselves first and give themselves permission to love yourself and um, be healthy and move the kapu aloha. Because we have to move it now across all kinds of areas. And when we get out of it, we need to help each other get back in and no judgment. Because that's the first thing we need to let go of. Because it's not about right or wrong. It's about making compassion to find the righteousness. And so in my pule, I say, you know, may all things righteous be fulfilled, Akua, today. In, in all that I attempt to do, help me to do that, you know? And that, that's what I think we want to get to that place. Every day we practice, and every day we have trials, but we keep going. Because we have to have the belief that we collectively want a better world and want to do better in the world. Mahalo for letting me speak to you. Yeah. So we do want to feed everyone, so our food just got here. <laughs> Yay! Food outside. You guys can make a plate. We can come back in here and talk stories some more. Yeah. Um, for a little while. Yeah. So, um, but I want to thank Kealoha. She's the president of Mauna Kea and I know if you guys didn't know that <laughs> as well. Um, and uh, as someone who, for who Papua Aloha has changed my life, 
I want to just thank you for coming. Oh, yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, Mahalo. Like, Mahalo. <laughs> yeah, Angelo has awesome. been involved. I mean, the yeah. first time I ever met her was in 1992 at a Kalawi legislative Wait. session. And that's the first time I ever met her. And that first time I met her, she was already doing Mahalo. Like, that was a long time yeah. ago. <laughs> well, <laughs> now yeah. I'm feeling old, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, was, I don't know. So, Kapu Aloha is something totally different, and I think it's something we got to continue talking about and trying to... I mean, I guess people like... Educators like us, we're trying to dissect it, right? Like, okay, what is, what is the principles of it? And, you know, how do you transfer it to this place or that place? Or... Um, how do you how do we use it with our kids at home mm -hmm. and things like that? So because it's been such um, a transformative movement, um, it kind of encompasses like a lot of things too, mm -hmm. you know, for mm -hmm. us, you know, like um, just not just the spiritual, but how we how we even our own behaviors, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think you know going up to the Mauna is a big part of understanding because then you really. It. Yeah, mm -hmm. really, and aligning yourself with the Mauna. Mm -hmm. Mahalo, ki aloha. Yeah, mahalo for having me. Aloha. <laughs>